We hear so much about India these days. It is indeed incredible, and we'll start by seeing some of the contrasts of this amazing land. The most famous site in India, and a street scene near the Taj Mahal. Gandhi's home in Delhi, just outside it. Our guide, Rajiv Kapoor and his family, middle class India. Line up for food in Delhi. The Samod Palace near Jaipur. Some of its elaborate interior. Villagers just outside the beautiful palace. Our hotel room in Varanasi. Sleeping on the stairs leading down to the Ganges. The elegant Fatipur Sikri near Agra. An urban scene in Agra. Motorcyclists must wear helmets. It's the law, but not their passengers. School in a small village. Even in Africa, they have chairs and planks for desks. Here, nothing. Rural village. Anywhere, India. Our hotel near Rantambore National Park. A nearby village. Workers piled into a truck bed. And our comfortable bus. Riches in a Sikh temple in Delhi. These are middle class Sikhs. Our beautiful hotel in Jaipur. Street scene in Jaipur, always chaotic. New Delhi pollution. Clear air of the mountains as we flew just south of the Indian Himalaya on our flight to Bhutan. Palace and squalor in a picture. The grandest mosque in Delhi. And the chaotic wiring just outside the mosque. Taking a bath on the street. Well, no comment. Elegant young girls in the park that houses the Gandhi Memorial. A young girl begs outside the bus. Our hotel in Delhi. Rural housing. Trash along the river in Jaipur. We're insulated from it all in our beautiful hotel. We visit an elegant upper middle class home in Jaipur. But they probably bought some of the food they served us from the street just outside their home. Bathing at a village well. A band of gypsies on their way to where? A nice rest stop at this lovely palace. And these were the signs on the restroom doors. Preparing food in a village. The buffet in our five-star hotel. Let's meet some of the Indians. Handsome and beautiful people. This Sikh was returning home from his visit to America. We have pronounced S-I-K-H as Sikh, but they pronounce it Sikh. Ernie beams at me taking a picture of this nice Indian family. 
A group of schoolboys are interested in us just as we are interested in them. A family picnicking at the Jaipur Amber Fort. And this is a colorful student group at Amber Fort. Mita was our beautiful hostess at our family cultural visit. We visited an upper middle class family at their beautiful home in Jaipur. a worker at one of the rug factories we visited. You see occasional holy men sitting around. Isn't that a cute baby? Lovely schoolgirls. This peasant peanut picker was gorgeous enough to be a star in a Bollywood movie. Groups of young boys always like to have their picture taken. All they ask is to look at the picture on the screen. Maybe he works at one of the call centers. Looks like the type, doesn't he? Mm, just another Indian family. Why are you taking my picture? These are boys in a small rural vill village that we visited. And this is the village grandma. Beautiful teenage girls. Okay, it's my favorite Hindu god, the elephant god Ganesh, who protects travelers. Is he a Hindu Saint Christopher? She wears sensible shoes for her sightseeing, just as we do. Joan enjoys interaction with a group of interested young people. A handsome groom arrives at the wedding on a jewel-bedecked horse. A Hindu wedding is really something to see. We interact with the people from the bus. Another village grandma. Peanut pickers offer us some of their harvest. An attractive family. Only one Indian in a thousand owns a car. Bikes are basic transportation. More on roads and transportation later. Bathing in the Ganges. Holy man with his hand out. Begging is all too common in India. I wonder if her face is as pretty as her braid. 
Now about transportation. This truck tells almost everything you need to know. Blow your horn. Gaudily decorated trucks dominate the main highways between major cities in India's north where our visit was concentrated. India probably has the worst highway infrastructure of any major country in the world. The camel carts share the road with the trucks. and even with elephants. Of course, in India, the British influence, they drive on the left. Here's a fast elephant passing a slow elephant. A bicyclist, motorcyclist, and a truck on one of the better main highways. Tractors, donkey carts, creative cars, even pedestrians carrying huge loads. City traffic is even more chaotic. If you have a horn, please blow it at all times. We rode in many rickshaws, pulled by bicyclists. This guy's had one too many passengers already today. What else? Mac delivery. Now this is rare. Cows usually don't do anything this useful. They just wander around the streets. This guy's bringing the groom's horse to the groom. Not him. Or this guy either. Almost every motorcyclist carries an unhelmeted passenger, or two. Any truck that's not a goods carrier is a people carrier. Now take a look at some of our transport. Almost every tourist in Jaipur rides an elephant up to the Amur Fort. He's waiting in line for passengers with his brightly decorated elephant. After a very bumpy ride, we arrive at the fort. In Rantambore National Park, we ride in this affair, looking for tigers. Camels, once you're up, are smoother than elephants. and jeeps are bumpier than camels. You've seen some of the contrasts of this strange and wonderful land, met some of its people, and had a glimpse of its varied means of transportation. Now we'll go on to India Part 2 for a photo journal of our fascinating trip.